What's up guys, it's TRT77 here with my week, I wanna say it, game of UPA Showdown. Uh, this week we take on Pokey Primo, uh, his link will be in the description down below along with the other coaches who are uploading in UPA Showdown. So as you can see he's got quite the scary team and uh, really realistically this isn't one of our better matchups despite our team being way better than it was before this is realistically not one of our better matchups in this season and if we're honestly looking at it it can be quite tricky because both mons like Mamoswine and Zarud are uh, huge threats to a lot of our mons that being said though we've got a I, I'm pretty confident in the six we've put forward. Um, first up, we have a Rotamo, which is bulky. It is faster than Mamoswine, and uh, it should take hits pretty well from Zarud. And uh, I've got Discharge instead of T-Bolt there, mainly because I'm looking to try to para either Zarud or Salamence. Uh, because I know he's been prone to running max speed, max HP Salamence, which is very annoying for my team. Uh, the next thing I've got is Tapu Fini Tesla Model F. Uh, it's Moonblast, Surf, Hydro Pump, Haze. It's a choice spec set. And that's because, honestly, if Suicune goes down, or if it's Fizzdev Suicune, this set just absolutely goes in on his team. He does not have a switch in for this mon. Uh, there's several mons I just go with Moonblast or with Hydro Pump. Like, I, I don't think realistically I'm gonna click Hydro Pump unless he brings Magmar. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to be spamming Moonblast, realistically. Uh, next up, we have Scissor Mega. A little bit of a weird set, but I wanted to speed creep uh, Jolly Mawile. I really doubt he'll ever bring the Jolly Mawile, but it's just one of those things where in my head I just thought, you know what, I probably have to do this. Um, pretty standard set, U-Turn, Bullet Punch, Toxic, Roost. Toxic is there in case he thinks Suicune is a switch in, but I don't know if that's going to be the case. I think he might hold Suicune in the back for Victini. Uh, Victini is here. It's an assault vest set with a lot of defense. Uh, the reason it has a lot of defense is we easily tank a Darkest Lariat from Zarud. We easily take a Sucker Punch from Mega Mawile. Um, I pretty much take any dark hit outside of a knockoff from Surf Fetch. I'm pretty sure a knockoff from Surf Fetch is probably, like, if it's Choice Band, it's still definitely killing. Um, and we'll still die to an Earthquake from Mamoswine. But outside of that, Flame Charge, we create Bolt Strike, Power Up Punch. You're going back with the classic Dual Dance set. Uh, I don't see a need, need to run any other moves outside of these four, to be honest with you. Like, I don't want to be U turning around too much on this team. Even though he has his Arud and things, it's like, I don't want to be faster than some of his mans, letting him get free scalds and stuff like that. Especially because Tapu Fini does not have any recovery this week. Next up, we have Gliscor. It's going to be a mixed... It is Fizz Def. It's mostly Fizz Def, but I did have 36 per def there to make sure that along with Protect, we are never, uh, I think, 3-hit KO'd by Scald from uh, Min, Min uh, Special Attack Soikun. Next up, it, it, it's also a Rock set. It's our Rocker for the week. It's got U-Turn, EQ, and Protect. Protect just puts us out of range of a lot of 2-hit KO and 3-hit KO ranges. Uh, next up, we have Gengar, which is um, making its comeback to our team after we used it in ISL. Uh, we have a Nasty Plot, Shadow Ball, Sludge Wave, Willow Wisp set. I'm hoping he's not brought Sucker Punch and Mega Mawile a lot. And I'm hoping if it comes to a situation where he does bring Sucker Punch, we can Willow Wisp it. Or even then, just Willow Wisping Mawile just lets Victini win. Also, Willow Wisping Mens would be great. Willow Wisping Mamoswine would be brilliant. Because again, that would just easily get us the win at this point. And uh, overall, the set just goes in against this team. Once I get a nasty plot up, other than Suiku, nothing is really... Like, even even Skunk really doesn't take two. And uh, I can always Willow on the Skunk Sucker. So, this is going to be our six going into the game, guys. And now I'm just going to jump into the game, guys. Now jumping into the game, guys... Um, I have to say, off the bat, I'm super surprised at half the team he's brought. I was not expecting so fetched. Um, I, I'm not sure what exactly. Like, honestly, the for me, the thing is, I know that he's he's relied on men's to be a lot more defensive than usual this season, so that's probably why he's brought men's. 
maybe it's an SD check to Scizor and uh, he's brought the Skunk 2 which I'm assuming is prepped for Calm Mind Fini. But uh, Suicune, Mamoswine and Zarud, those were, those were undisputed, those were coming anyway. Uh, so I'm just gonna jump into it. I think here I can lead Glyscore and get off my Toxic Orb first because it's vital. And also it's a little less important this game because there's no Mega Marwell to check. And uh, he's gonna lead Surfetched. I'm gonna protect. He's probably gonna click the knock. He does. And we get Toxic. Here, so one thing I have to state is my mindset going to this game is not the best. Um, as I, it's no excuse. I can't make excuses for my players. Um, but uh, here I'm just gonna proactively click U-turn because I just assumed he would go Suicune because this would be such an easy opportunity for Suicune to set up even if I just got rocks up. But he chooses to stay in with Surfetched and click Knock again and he is Life Orb. So here I'm just gonna roost up. I don't expect one to be faster, two for him to stay in but he stays in and he clicks Close Combat. Now I realize I'm in a bit of trouble because I didn't realize I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be able to roost on anything. And um, unless it's like a Zaru clicking power whip. So it's a big issue here. Um, but at minus one, 100% we killed from that range with bullet punch. So I wasn't too worried. So I clicked bullet punch here, but hindsight is 2020. I should have clicked roost. I'm gonna go Tapu Fini on the men's here. Again, this is a misplay. I don't know why I started so poorly. I should have just gone straight into Glyscor. Taken, it was the most obvious dual wing beat in the world, or even a fire move, the most obvious in the world. Just gone to Gliscor, got my rocks up. That's what I should have done. Uh, but here, he's gonna get valuable chip off on Victini. I'm gonna click the Moon Blast here, and we do crit and kill the skunk. Now, at the time, I thought this did matter, but um, he's not scarfed skunk, unless he's scarfed skunk. I didn't check after the game, but. Unless he scarf skunk, we outsped and uh, this did like 80 to 95 to offensive skunk and like we two shot all the time because it was Specs Feeny. So he goes into Zarud here. I'm gonna go into Gliscor. He does click the U turn this time around and he goes into Mammoth Swine. Uh, so here first I'm gonna click the Protect and uh, he does click the Icicle Crash. Here honestly, I don't know why I stayed in. I feel like. I should have definitely, the reason I was scared to switch was because Scizor was so low and the thing is honestly right now I didn't know what endgame I wanted outside of Scizor because all I knew was I need like 6% of chip on this like about uh, 65 on Zarud which I can easily get between Victini or uh, uh, Gengar even if he's resist berry and I just needed like chip on Suicune slash Victini setting up on Suicune so, and between that, I needed Gengar to burn Mens. So, that was mostly the endgame I'm looking at right now because I'm really sad about the fact that I've let Scizor get this chipped. But, uh, good prep on his part. He does stay in and he does click the Ice Skull Crash and we do lose Gliscor here, which is absolutely huge because now we have next to no switch instruments. So, I'm gonna go into Rota Mo here, expecting him to switch into Zarur. I'm gonna click the Nasty Plot. Here, I'm gonna be honest, I got a little bit greedy and I clicked Discharge because I'm going for the Paras because this is clearly Scarf Zarud. He's brought in Scarf uh, to... Um, because I calc the damage in the first Darkest Lariat and I was just like, please just give us the Para and the Discharge here. But we don't get the Discharge Para and I'm a little bit stuck here so I have to go Finny. I don't have a switch in. And uh, he does click the Lariat again, does a good chunk to Finny but... Here, we're just gonna click Moon Blast. I'm not too concerned. I'm just gonna keep clicking Moon Blast. He doesn't have a resist to Moon Blast. I have no reason to not just keep clicking Specs Moon Blast here. Um, he does click. We do get the Spetak drop there, which kind of it's just not it's not super important. But uh, I'm just gonna keep clicking Moon Blast. And uh, here, he's gonna let us take out Suicune, which is absolutely huge for us as our end game. Um. He's gonna go into Mens here, and I just decide here, you know what, let's just sack Feeny. Because if he sacks, if he, if he lets me sack Feeny here, he has got four physical attackers left. One, two, three, and four are all physical attackers. I get to burn one of them with Gengar. And once I burn one of them with Gengar, it comes down to 
how I can position Victini and just break through this team. And if he lets me burn Mens, that might just be game. So here, I'm just going to sack Feeney to the dual wing beat, but he misses the dual wing beat. And Feeney is going to take out Scissor Mega. Now, I'm real, I am really apologize for that. Like, I did not... I was just sacking that. That was not part of the, the plan I had for my end game. I, I really did not want it to go down that way, but it is what it is. And... I guess it's Pokemon. I don't know, man. Like, I felt so bad. I felt so bad about the fact that he missed that dual ring beat. I, I, I hate it when 90% accurate moves miss. Y'all have seen me get so mad about missing Leaf Storms and missing Blue Flares. Even though Blue Flare, I think, is like 93 on Victini. But still, um, this was just really dumb. I was I was really, like, really pissed about him missing the, the dual wing beat. But um, either which way, here, I don't have to take a risk and risk my Scizor. We're going to sack Feeny and go into Victini. I'm going to Victini here because I know for a fact I live a Darkest Lariat and I click Flame Charge. And Flame Charge should kill Zarud at 38 no matter what. We do get the Flame Charge here off on the Mamoswine. And here I'm going to click the V Create and we do kill Mamoswine here. Um, he is going to go into Zarud here I assume. And I'm just going to sack Rotom Mo. We don't have any other need for Rotom Mo at this point. And uh, Rotammo is gonna go down. Um, in hindsight, honestly, if I went with the same Rotammo sets I've been bringing throughout, if I brought a Will-O-Wisp set, this Rotammo would have just crippled the team single-handedly, which would have been beautiful. But hindsight is always 20-20. He goes to the Lariat here, and I click the Flame Charge. And I'm not sure how much HP investment he had, but like that had to be min roll. Like there is no way that was 37 was not even a roll on my calc. Like, my calc was showing me 38.2 min. So he had to have some HP and it had to still be a min roll because he had to outspeed... Uh, uh, he had to outspeed uh, Scar uh, at least plus one Victini. But here, uh, this is going to suck a bit because he's going to be able to take out Victini here. And uh, I'm a little bit worried but not too worried because I know one thing. I can go Scizor here. And uh, I'm just going to click the bullet punch. But he goes straight into Surf Fetched, which I don't know. I feel like that was a bit of a throw. Because, like, I feel like... Actually, it wouldn't have mattered because Surf Fetched would have been, would have, wouldn't have been able to first impression at that point. Uh, and Gengar just cleans with Shadow Ball. But I think he he, he didn't expect me to bullet punch there. And uh, actually, I don't know. I, I'm not exactly sure why he went into Surf Fetched hard. Uh, but... Um, if he had not gone into surf edge, that would have been a 1-0 rather than a 2-0 is what I'm assuming. Um, but either which way, we're going to pick off surf edge here with Scizor. And uh, he's going to go into Zarud as his last man. And we do click the bullet punch and pick up the 2-0 victory over the Anaheim, Appletons and Pokey Primo. Now, this is... This has been... Like, I, I feel really bad about the men's turn, but uh, I do feel I still had a really good chance of winning because of Gengar having Willow Wisp on it, and the fact that he was all physical attackers, and once I burnt one thing on this team, it just got so much easier to deal with everything. And uh, honestly, I feel like I would have caught him switching on men's, which would have given me a burn on potentially Mammoth Swine, which would have been beautiful. Because at that point, Victini would have got off both uh, uh, would have got off the double flame charge should have let me outspeed the root um, but it is what it is uh, it is Pokemon um, I will take the win honestly we are finally over 500 with 4 and 3 uh, GG's to Poke Primer um, I'm super happy because Poke Primer actually is was super nice during scheduling and he actually scheduled to play me during a time that wasn't late at night or early in the morning and he played early in the morning his time so Check him out. Really nice dude. Um, and uh, that's probably just going to be it from us, guys. Uh, our finals game for WPF should be going up later this week. Um, we're probably playing on Sunday. So that's going to be it from me, guys. This is TRT77, and this is me signing off.